Tune on to City TV, channel 79, cable 7. And tune your stereo to Chum FM, 104.5. From Stewart Air Force Base in Newburgh, New York, rehearsing for his upcoming tour. In performance with some special friends. And in conversation with Jeannie Becker. Tonight, the new music brings you the return of Meatloaf. Meatloaf is rehearsing for an upcoming world tour, supporting his new album, Dead Ringer, which is already number one in the charts in Britain and moving fast here in North America. For the rehearsals, he rented a vacant aircraft hangar at Stewart Air Force Base, a top security facility only two hours out of downtown Manhattan, and one of the only places he could move in the immense amount of sound and lighting equipment he and his crew of 37 people needed to work with for three solid weeks. It's been three years since his last tour, and on this one, Meatloaf's taking no chances. He's going out with the best technical crews available and using some weird and wonderful effects. There was a family atmosphere among everybody involved in the project, even though they were working up to 14 hours a day. But it was the kind of work that's necessary to get the stage show to the level the fans will demand and give Meatloaf the kind of success he enjoyed with the album Batted of Hell and songs like Paradise by the Dashboard Life. GD asked him how he felt about his comeback. I always wanted to know what a comeback was. That's like, uh, I was reading, a, I don't know if people know who Jim Plunkett is. <laughs> Jim Plunkett was the quarterback for the Oakland Raiders last year, and, uh, and he was going, I never came, I don't know what a comeback is. I was just sitting on the bench for a little while. I didn't really come back. I could always do what I could always do. It just so happens that then all of a sudden here I am doing it again, and it's not really a comeback. Um, but it did take a long time to, you know, to get together to do it again. People yeah, know well, what the, the rumors going around about you. Well, were I, nice. you know, it was just the voice. The voice just decided to take a rest, and um, and I'm still working on it to come back 100 percent. You know, it's you not, still but don't it's close. Feel that it's back. No, I don't. Right I don't. But it's it's it's. It's back enough that it's all I need, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Um, I heard you met a great therapist from California. Yeah, named Warren Berigian. Yeah, he is unbelievable. Um, the voice has days, you know. It's just not what what's what's missing is the strength in it. In other words, the endurance, and that just comes with time. Upcoming tour, Meatloaf has surrounded himself with an incredible collection of musicians. Terry Williams, one of the world's great rock drummers, who was available because Rockpile fell apart. Davy Johnstone, who for years played with Elton John, toured with Alice Cooper, and only recently finished work with Stevie Nicks on her Belladonna album. Other members include Steve Buslow, who toured with Meat on his first tour, Paul Jacobs, who replaces Jim Steinman on keyboards, Georgie Myers on second keyboards, backup singer Teddy Neely, once the lead in the musical Jesus Christ Superstar, and Eric Troyer, also on backup vocals. Meatloaf's biggest problem was replacing Carla DeVito, his touring partner for Batted of Hell, and now a star in her own right. His choice was Pamela Moore, who came to Meat's auditions following a successful tour backing up Bob Seger. You know, immediately going out, uh, she's going to be in uh, she's going to be in trouble because they're going to compare her to Carla DeVito. And the problem is, is that people only remember the end of Carla DeVito and what she did at the end. They don't remember how she started. Carla started. It, it takes a while to get into the format. Carla, at this point in time, and, and where Pam is, was in exactly the same position as Pam because it's real hard to figure out what I got going on in my mind. And I see Pamela in the back, like, going crazy, you know, moving. And then she'd come up front and she'll stand still. And I told her yesterday, I said, don't stand still in the front. Don't move in the back. Stand still in the front. If you want to stand still somewhere, stand still in the back. With the band the caliber that meets put together, improvisation becomes an event. This straight-off-the-boards rendition of the Stones' Gimme Shelter sounded more like a rehearsed part of the show than a pickup jam session.
think you would have made it without Jim Steinman's material? Oh, no, there's, there you go. See, that's the question. Yeah, I would have been successful because I, I am a live performer, and I would have succeeded to a live extent. Without those songs, no, Bad Out of Hell would not have sold as many records. Period. Because each added to the other. Without me touring, Bad Out of Hell was sitting at 300,000. With me touring, Bat sold about 8 million. Um, but one plays the other. If they hadn't have seen me do Paradise or those songs, you know, maybe two million. You know, maybe none. I don't know. Through watching the crew work out for a week in preparation to tour, one thing became clearly evident. Meatloaf is a tyrant. And when it comes to making decisions, this ain't no democracy. I want to be a board champion and a baseball okay? At any level, Meatloaf is competitive and likes to run the show, even when it comes down to a quick break for football. Can you see any other reason for a 300-pound quarterback? Meatloaf was vulnerable only once during these rehearsals, when they were testing a hoist used to fly him out over the band for a grand entrance. The whole band conspired to leave him hanging, angry and frustrated. Every time his feet touched the ground and he thought it was all over, they hauled Meat back up again. This is just good fun, and the band really has come together as a working unit. It's a very tough tour. Yeah, you're you know? pretty you're pretty tough. You seem pretty tough dealing with the band and ordering people around, but you've said that your bark is worse than your bite. I say please and thank you. I'm polite. You're not a dictator. I am, but I'm polite about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're a very polite dictator. What are for love about? Well, um... Dead Ringer for Love is about, oh, it's about a teenage, actually, it's about a teenage boy. And um, he's got fake ID, you know, just like every teenage boy. And he goes, he goes to this bar every night. So, you know, and he doesn't have a car or anything. And he sees this older woman. <laughs> and he's been watching this older woman forever. And uh, she must be at least 19. He must be at least 16, you know? She's got a car now. I mean, that's, she's got one. And uh, finally, he gets the nerve up to go make his move. And she scares him half to death and backs him into a corner and winds up taking him home anyway. But it's very animalistic. I mean, it can, you know, you don't have to be 16 or 19. And you don't have to be an older woman. That was just my description at the moment. But I put in a, a, in a middle section, uh, I used African logs and jungle birds and everything, because I figured that it, 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 what takes place in those in, in these singles bars or in bars when guys pick, it's very uh, it's very basic it's a very basic emotion you know it's like it's like your place or mine my managers got the wild idea to, to use share because we've been trying a lot of different girls on dead ringer for love and uh, they said oh you ought to come bring in share and I kept going now, I don't think she's right for the part. And they kept going, yeah, but if she is right for the part, imagine the video you can do with it, the film. And I said, yeah, she'll have a great concept of it, but I don't know. I said, the song's real hard to sing, you know? It's in a weird key for, for uh, females. And they, they said, well, bring her in. I said, well, I'm not going to go in and tell this, this, this star, this woman, who is a, you know, a real talent and everything, that she's not good enough for my song. I feel like an idiot. And they said, well, we'll be there to do it. She came, and they didn't. But luckily, uh, she walked in, and within two minutes of um, being in the studio, we were working together great. And then, um, uh, doing the film, I knew that you know she was a natural because she understood the song right away. A lot of people didn't, you know, the dramatic intent and da 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 da. da you know, it goes on. And um, yeah, and so she brought in um, her dancers, and I brought in my softball team, and thus you had the video of Get Ring. What about uh, your appeal? I mean, you've been considered a sex symbol for quite Absolutely. some time. <laughs> Has married life changed any of that? No, I still have my charm. What do you think your <laughs> secret is? Hey, 
I'm from Texas. My secret, my secret with women is that I, I actually understand women. My, I, I don't understand men at all. Uh, in an argument between a man and a woman, I would always side with the woman. I think most men are jerks. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you said that. Listen, thanks a lot, Nate. It was great talking yeah, to you. Yeah, now I'm going to get stoned oh, by yeah. all the men. Oh, yeah, <laughs> great. Okay. Not all the men are jerks, but you know, they have certain attitudes. <laughs> And they ought, to, they ought to think about, you know, changing it around a bit. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. It's like Toronto because City TV brings him back alive. It's Saturday Night Live. See you on City next.